Okay, so I've been sort of informally throwing around the term of membership, right, and kind of just indicating that one element can be in a set or not, right? And so let's just formalize that notion a little bit more and talk about what membership is. And we actually have a special symbol for it. And the symbol is this. And that is the way that we denote that one object is in fact an element of a set or a member of the set. Member and element mean the same thing, okay? So it's kind of an E epsilon looking thing, kind of looks like a pitchfork without the uh, handle. So let's make a couple sets here as an example. So we'll go back to one of our old friends. We'll set, say let's b, b, x, such that x squared minus four equals zero. And we'll say let d be the set of Davies kids. And we're gonna say let t be the set, I'm gonna go meta on you here, of all three element sets. Okay, so I know that's weird thinking about sets of sets, but it's certainly legit to say we've got a set and that set contains all three element sets, okay? Even though it might seem weird, it's not you know against, uh, against the rules or anything like that. So one thing we could do is we could say two is an element of B, because that's certainly true. Two is one of the numbers that makes this equation true when you plug it into it, right? So two is an element of B. And I could say uh, Lizzie is an element of D, because Lizzie is in fact one of the Davies children. Another thing I could say is Fred is not an element of D, okay? So notice that I'm using sort of a slash through here to indicate that it's not the element of, and that's legit notation. Uh, and I'm gonna say that B is not an element of T, but that D is an element of T. These are all true statements, right? And again, D is a set with three members. Hopefully you know that by now. My kids come up in a lot of examples, so memorize that fact if you haven't done it already. And therefore, since D is a set with three elements, because remember, the cardinality of D is three, that must mean that D is an element of T, because T is the set of all three element sets, and D is therefore an element of T. Okay, one last thing that's kind of, uh, seems a little asymmetric to me, but you gotta get used to it, is the notion of set equality. So whenever we say that two sets are equal, what we mean is, and this is just the rule, we mean that their extensions are equal. So two sets are equal if they have the same members. Doesn't matter if their intentions are different or not, all that matters is the extension. So you remember an example I had earlier where I said, you know, maybe we have one set that is the set of all the Davies kids, then we have another set that is the set of all the people who live at 1310 Chassel Lane who are under the age of 20. Now those are conceptually two very different things, right? You could certainly imagine a world in which the people who live at 1310 Chassel Lane who are under the age of 20 are not the same as the Davies kids, right? That was certainly true before we bought the house. If we ever, ever had another kid, that won't be true anymore. Once Lizzie turns you know, 20, that won't be true anymore. So there's lots of different possible universes in which those two don't coincide. But since right now, the fact that we're defining them right now, they do coincide, we're gonna say that those two sets are equal. So even though they have very different meanings, even though they're conceptually two very different things, even though they have two different intentions, they have the same, the same extension, and therefore we're going to say that they're equal.